Hi, I'm Michael. This is Lessons from the Screenplay. The assembly of a team is a classic storytelling device. Ten ought to do it, don't you think? A well-designed team allows the plot to move forward by enabling the protagonist to achieve their goal. You think we need one more? And at the same time, keeps the story interesting by providing a constant source of conflict. You think we need one more? To create the ideal balance of harmony and dissonance within a team, the screenwriter needs to make sure the character's traits, or some might say stats, are well balanced. So today, I'm enlisting the help of fellow YouTuber Tierzu. Hi Michael, how's it going? Who makes videos breaking down the stats of animals and ranking their power from F to S, the highest possible tier in gaming. Together, we're going to break down the characteristics of one particular team tasked with hunting down a great white shark, to see how their strengths and weaknesses play against each other, creating the twists and turns of the film's plot, and to reveal how the story ultimately forces the protagonist to confront his fears and the enemy head on. Let's take a look at Jaws. Before the team is created in Jaws, the filmmakers have to introduce the setting, the problem, and the protagonist. The story takes place on Amity Island, a small resort town. In the first scene, a woman is viciously attacked while swimming at night. God, please, no! And the following morning, we learn that protecting the town is the responsibility of our protagonist. Let's get a quick rundown of Police Chief Martin Brody and his relevant character traits. Tirzu? Police Chief Brody is a New Yorker who's only been living on Amity Island a short time, hence his low local stat. Being specced for police work, he obviously knows next to nothing about marine biology or hunting sharks. In fact, he hates water. With these stats, one might even wonder why he's the party leader at all. But what Brody lacks in marine knowledge, he makes up for with a high investment in safety. It's his responsibility to protect the people of Amity Island, and he takes this very seriously. From a character design standpoint, Brody is the perfect protagonist for Jaws. He has none of the skills required to overcome the challenge at hand, but has all the determination. So Brody refuses to put more lives at risk and immediately sets out to close the beach in order to keep the town safe. Where do we keep the beach closed Chief, signs? Chief. We never had it. No? You, but because he lacks expertise and the clout that might come from being a local, his plan is rejected by a higher authority, Mayor Vaughn. Martin, you, you gonna shut down the beaches on your own authority? Well, what other authority do I need? We're really a little anxious that you're, uh, you're rushing into something serious here. It's your first summer, you know. Despite knowing the right thing to do, Brody is helpless to stop the shark from attacking again. <laughs> resulting in the tragic death of a young boy. Alice! Let's see where Brody ranks on our tier list. At this point in the story, it's pretty clear that Brody ranks way down at the bottom of the tier list. He's just not powerful enough to stop this shark on his own. In order for the protagonist to overcome the obstacle at hand, he's going to need to make up for the weaknesses holding him back. In other words, it's time to add another member to Brody's party. Who are you? Matt Hooper, I'm from the uh, Oceanographic Institute. Hooper is not a local whatsoever, so he's no help to Brody in that regard. And he's less concerned with safety as well. But Hooper specs incredibly high in marine knowledge and knows a bit about shark hunting too. Plus, his high-tech skill might come in handy. With Hooper now on Brody's team, they're able to confirm that the young woman who was killed in the opening scene was in fact killed by a shark. Well, this is not a boat accident. It wasn't any propeller. It wasn't any coral reef. And it wasn't Jack the Ripper. It was a shark. And they're able to disprove the theory that the small tiger shark killed by some local fishermen was the one attacking swimmers. That's it. Together, they are making progress. But a story without conflict risks losing momentum. So Brody and Hooper's differing traits are designed to create conflict as well as progression. When Hooper wants to explore a sunken vessel to prove that the shark hasn't yet been killed, Brody's affinity for safety and distaste for water make him hesitate. We gotta find him right now, he's a night feeder. On the water? Well, if we're looking for a shark, we're not gonna find him on the land. Yeah, but I'm not drunk enough to go out in a boat. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. And when they do find the proof they're looking for, the tooth of a great white shark, Hooper's lack of caution <laughs> lands the pair right back where they started. 
without the concrete evidence they need. As a result, the mayor still won't let them close the beach for the 4th of July, which results in mass panic as well as the death of yet another Amity Island citizen. <laughs> With Hooper added to the party, they're doing much better than when Brody was trying to solo this campaign, earning them a spot in C tier. But overall, these two still aren't powerful enough to deal with the problem at hand. We're gonna need a bigger team. You all know me. You know how I earn a living. At the story's midpoint, Brody convinces the mayor to hire Quint, a local professional shark hunter. Now things are looking better. With extremely high local marine knowledge and shark hunting stats, Quint build fills all the party's gaps. Quint almost seems OP, but his low safety and tech rating might cause some problems. Quint complicates the dynamics of the team. While he and Hooper are both marine experts, just tie me a sheep shank. How's that? They come from different walks of life. You got city hands, Mr. Hooper. You've been counting money all your life. All right, all right, all right. Hey, I don't need this. I don't need this working class hero crap. You, you, you're not going to do this aboard the ship, are you, Mr. Quint? While Hooper relies on technology, safety float, temperature gauge, spirit. Quint distrusts it. What are you, some kind of half ass astronaut? With Quint around, there is certainly no shortage of conflict. But it's not just about creating conflict for conflict's sake. The way the team members interact directly affects how the plot unfolds. When Brody, Hooper, and Quint are not cooperating, when there is dissonance among them, they experience setbacks. What? Damn it, Martin! This is compressed air! Well, what the hell kind of a knot was that? You pulled the wrong one! You screw around with these tanks and they're gonna blow up! Yes, yeah, real fine expensive gear you brought out here, Mr. Hooper. But when the team works together, when there is harmony, they progress. Shoot! Time! All right, let's see how long that battle takes to bring him up! The design of the three characters allows for swings between harmony and dissonance as needed to move the plot forward. Despite a rocky start, this version of the team is the most effective yet, which lands them a spot in A tier they might stand a chance at killing the shark as long as they keep cooperating. The assembly of the team has gone well enough so far, and the three men stand poised to kill the shark once and for all. But ultimately, this is Brody's story, not the team's. So once again, the character traits that have made them a successful team are also the ones that will bring about their failure. As they wait for the shark to reappear, the team ends up drinking and bonding. But moments later, as the three men swap stories about their battle scars, a final key difference between Hooper and Quint is revealed. You know the thing about a shark, he's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eye. When he comes at you, he doesn't seem to be living until he bites you, and those black eyes roll over white and then Oh, then you hear that terrible high-pitched screaming. The ocean turns red. While Hooper is a marine expert because he loves sharks... I love sharks. You love sharks. Yeah, I love them. I love them. Quint has a personal vendetta against them. Unlike Hooper and Brody, Quint is determined to make sure he kills the Great White himself. So when they get to the final showdown with the shark, and Brody tries to call in help from the Coast Guard. Hello, Mayday Orca! Quint makes sure that's not possible. Excuse me, Chief. That's great! That's just great! Now, where the hell are we, huh? You're sort of fireable, Quint, you know that? All while the boat is sinking, Hooper's plan to use his high tech equipment to lethally inject the shark fails miserably and Quint meets an unfortunate end. So ultimately, it's up to Brody to overcome the weaknesses that have been holding him back. He has to conquer his fear of water, throw caution to the wind, and like a true seaman, climb the mast of a sinking ship to finally achieve his goal. Smile, you son of a bitch! <laughs>
With the help of his party and with all the XP he gained along the way, Chief Brody is finally able to level up, earning him the highest rating of S tier. I used to hate the water. <laughs> I can't imagine why. Jaws is a perfect example of how to construct a team of allies and opponents that make it possible for the protagonist to achieve their goal while guaranteeing plenty of conflict along the way. By cleverly designing each team member to have opposing characteristics, the filmmakers allow characters to fill in for each other's weaknesses while also challenging each other's strengths, creating an ebb and flow of harmony and dissonance that ultimately threatens to derail the mission. But in the end, it's exactly the kind of crew needed to navigate a top-tier film like Jaws. One of the challenges in designing characters is keeping track of all the traits. Depending on your story, you may also be designing unique locations or even whole worlds. There's a piece of writing software that is designed specifically to help you keep all of that organized. Campfire Pro. Campfire Pro has character pages to help you manage details and backstories, endless timelines to visualize story beats, and even a corkboard style map view to track all the locations you need. And with the optional add-on world building pack, you can create magic systems, species, languages, and more. So whether you're an author writing a fantasy novel or a DM working on some homebrew content, Campfire Pro is a great tool to check out. To learn more and to start a 10-day free trial, head to the link in the description. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I wanna say a big thank you to Tirzu for collaborating with us on this one. All of his videos are as fun as they are informative, so go check out his channel and be sure to subscribe. Thank you as always to the patrons on Patreon for supporting this channel and making it possible, and thank you for watching.